Primal Chaos. Hey guys, Primal Chaos here. Welcome to the channel. If I have one great regret in life, it appears to be now that it's taken me this long to get to know Postmodern Jukebox. <laughs> um, and, and of course, I want to thank all you guys for pushing me in this direction. But wow, like there's so much going on here that is right up my alley. And, you know, so you'll have to excuse me if, if you're not a huge fan of this. I mean, why would you be watching this if you weren't? But um, there might be a lot of diving back into Postmodern Jukebox, jukebox in the future. Now, this is um, obviously, it's Hayley Reinhardt again, who was my first introduction to, as, as a vocalist um, guest on Postmodern Jukebox. And so I'm a big fan of the song. I'm a big fan of Jack White and his, his whole concept of music and how he sort of pushes the limits in his own way. And so, I mean, there's nothing to lose here. This is all fantastic, you know. I love that they just seem to just find a space and set up and just hit record. This, this that's the beauty of this. It's so much, so much honesty and truth behind these guys. Um, yeah, but anyway, we're going to jump pretty much straight in. Uh, I don't have too much else to talk about up front, so let's let's just see what they do with this arrangement. That's always the joy of discovering how other people hear and interpret things, and so I'm super keen to hear these guys play a song I'm super familiar with. And to be honest with you, isn't all that complicated, or at least is deceptively simple, you know? So anyway, let's jump in. What an iconic bass line. I'm gonna fight them all. A seven nation army couldn't oh. hold me back. That groove. They're gonna rip it off. She's swinging it just, just right. Time right behind my back And I'm talking to myself at night Because I can't forget Oh, the piano, really nice choices Back and forth through my mind Behind a cigarette And the message comes Love the way Scott's playing the timing too. It's really cool. It just says it all, doesn't it? It just it just solidifies the genre, right? It 
it's it's like I'm in a juke joint in the in the 1930s or something, 20s, like. regret with this is that it wasn't on stage in a sleazy club with lighting so you could see all of the sparkles on that dress you know you know what i mean it sort of evokes that sort of someone said you'll that you won't be able to not do a comparison to jessica rabbit um, <laughs> and of course you know the, the similarities are there for sure but one thing that's really striking with this one is Haley's, you know the authenticity of her voice her tone just and, and, and of course her, her ability to sort of um, maneuver through like those, those kind of uh, affectations in a, in a really authentic way. It just sells the entire song. It sells the drama and the imagery and everything like that um, and leads, leans right into the authenticity. But anyway, I'll get more into that in a minute. I'm just going to jump to an ad break when you come back. Um, yeah, let's, let's really get to the bottom of this one. This is fantastic. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you in part by Skillshare. Now, anyone who knows me will tell you that I have way too many interests and hobbies. I'm also what's known as an autodidact, which means I'm largely self-taught, but my interests vary wildly amongst an entire gamut of disciplines. Disciplines ranging from things like music production, composition, video production, YouTube content creation, 3D printing, 3D modeling, electronics, woodworking, drawing, painting, graphic design, computers and code. The list just goes on and on. And in order to become proficient in all of these disciplines, it's taken me a lifetime of skills gathered piecemeal here, there, and everywhere. By and large, it just takes so long to develop a skill level in any of those individual things. But it ain't the old days anymore. And today we've got services like Skillshare, a service that provides you with near limitless amounts of information for one small subscription fee. Seriously, all of their curated learning modules and lessons and classes. They're all available at your fingertips. What if you're a graphic designer and then one day you just need to learn something very specific in the world of spreadsheets? Your Skillshare account has you covered. And the courses are all curated, meaning that there's a standard level of competency required for anyone to be teaching a course. And the best part about all this is Skillshare offers free trials. So all you need to do is click the link in the description. It'll take you to their site and you can start learning right now. Or, you know, like wait till after my video. But either way, look, Skillshare. Okay, so the thing that really drives Postmodern Jukebox fundamentally is their, every single person in, 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 the, in the band, um, you know, to, at the back of the stage are world-class musicians and they just get it. They understand their genre uh, at, at a genetic level. They really know what they're doing. And what having confidence in a backing band like that allows a genius like Haley to come in and just play because she has all the faith in the world that everything behind her that's going on is, is truthful and authentic and real. And it really gives her an opportunity to shine and do what she does best, which is produce a super authentic um, genre vocal, you know, something that, uh, you know, that would be, it's, it's, she's not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? She, she stands on not the shoulders of the, of the female singers and stuff that came before her in the genre. She stands alongside them. And that's the difference. A lot of people can come out here and reproduce, you know, something that they've heard growing up and things like that. Haley understands it at a fundamental level to the point where she's, you know, you've got people like, um, I'm trying to think of some examples, but um, singers like um, like Edda James, Nina Simone, Billie Holiday, Peggy Lee, you know, all of those, those ladies sort of, they carved out the genre. Um, throughout history and and then you had someone you know come along like Haley and and not just repeat what's been done she she she's obviously studied these performers to such a degree that she can then produce this stuff herself in an authentic way and that's that's phenomenal and you, you know that's obvious through all of her little nuanced affectations which you know we'll go through might jump back a little bit and have have a listen to some of the stuff but what I really loved, you know, and again, this is such a mature and competent sort of thing, 
is that particularly through the verses and stuff like that, Scott is, um, he's not accompanying her as far as just, you know, the rest of the band is playing chords underneath. He's embellishing the vocal line using, you know, say sevenths and ninths and little jazzy kind of, um, you know, interpretive piano as opposed to just, you know, playing chords underneath. He's, he's sort of, he'll be like doing like a, I don't know, like little embellishments on top rather than, um, rather than just playing along. And that, uh, it's it's those little flourishes and stuff like that that really take Haley's vocal to the to the next level. That's what I'm talking about with this trust. You know, she knows that she can play around and have the freedom to really sort of embody the flavor of what she's trying to do, um, without fear that someone behind is going to get lost or confused or not understand where she's going. Because all of these guys get it to a degree, where when somebody starts to pull away at the DNA of the piece and play around with it everybody can immediately interpret what she's doing and and sort of adjust to suit or, you know, or just let her do her thing and not let it get in the way. Um, and that's absolutely phenomenal to see. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, until you sit down and really critically analyze something like this, you may not even realize is going on because everything is so polished and perfect to the untrained eye or to the casual observer. It'll just seem like some, oh, these guys are just doing a great job. But the level to which they're doing a great job is is like layers and layers underneath the facade of what you're seeing here, you know, and that's always really exciting to see. I'm I'm a, I'm I'm becoming more and more of a huge fan of these guys to the point where in the background the other day I, I found a playlist and put it on, um, just to not to really listen but to just have it on just so that I can appreciate it. Something going on in the background, um, so that you know I like to be really careful not to spoil reaction potential future reactions which is a kind of frustrating thing with this channel because i'll find something like this i'm super huge fan of and i can't sort of dive in and listen to all of their material in case i really you know spoil something that you know will be a great reaction in the future um but yeah let's jump back in a little bit i just want to oh the first thing right that i wanted to point out if you listen to the rhythm they're snapping in time and so she could come in and sing it just like, see, the way Jack White does it is it's it's very straight, right? I'm going to Wichita. It's right on the beat. Haley immediately starts to swing it. And you'll hear that when she starts singing. I'm going to fight them all. A seven nation army couldn't hold me back. It's kind of like this little half They're beat between, you know. Um, but that vocal sets the entire tone of the song. If she came out singing straight, everybody else would have to play differently to match, you know. And I'm talking to myself at night because I can't forget. See, now listen to Scott, what he's doing. He's embellishing. He's not just accompanying, right? Uh, there's nothing sleazier than muted brass. It just it just sounds like you're drunk stumbling home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like or some guy in a suit is like making his way home at 3 a.m. and he's like He's, he's about to bump into somebody in a dark alley that he probably shouldn't, you know. Um, I, I, I sort of fell in love with this sort of stuff through probably not the most appropriate channel as far as like there's, there's definitely better sources. But uh, in the 2000s, uh, the Cherry Pop and Daddies made a big splash and they were touring around. And it's interesting because they kind of um, somehow managed to uh, infiltrate the current punk zeitgeist. So they'd be like the Vans Warp Tour with all these punk bands. And then you have this big band swing band that would come along for the ride as well. And, uh, you know, a lot of Chad sort of dudes from the 2000s got into got into Zoot Suit sort of music um, by way of, of those guys. And what always, what I, the reason I always like to listen to their debut album was I always found their brass players to be amazing. They're always um, really tight on point in tune. 
Um, but yeah, like I'd often listen to, there's a song called like, here comes the snake, which has a lot of brass in it. Uh, and I'd always listen to that. And I, could, I wasn't even listening to the vocals or anything like that. I was just listening to the brass guys and them doing their thing. Um, or the woodwind brass woodwind guys. Um, and you know, that's, that, that sort of got me sort of into listening to stuff like this. And then, you know, there's a journey beyond that as well. But, um, when it just, I mean, listen to how much color those three guys in the back add. As soon as they come in, it just changes the entire concept viscerally. I also love how the trumpet's playing like a descant sort of part. It's like a harmony, you know? Every single one's got a story to tell. Everyone knows about it. <laughs> a little squeak. <laughs> yeah, from the Queen of England to the Hounds of Hell. Yeah, I, rem I remember hearing that too in the first run through is that she can sort of push it so that. Uh, she sort of has this um, cheeky kind of breathiness through there. Hounds of hell. The queen of England to the hounds of hell. Yeah, just sort of this little squeaky kind of. That's that authenticity I was talking about, right? It just feels right. And that ain't what you want to hear, but that's what. And there's some brashness that you'd find in sort of Nina Simone, you know, the attitude, you know. Yeah. Nice distortion there through compression. You know, she, she's just a master. She really is. Somebody in the comments pointed out that when she was kicked out of um, American Idol, uh, some reporter wrote an article about it and said, oh, well, Hayley Reinhardt's been kicked out of... Uh, American Idol. It's probably for the best. She was way too good for that show anyway. <laughs> and I couldn't agree more. She's she's the she's the real deal. It's a tragedy that people this talented need to go to shows like American Idol um or these you know bloated kind of singing contests to be discovered. And and in fact it's probably for the absolute best that she didn't win. Um a lot of times you know the 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 major prize for these things is a record deal. Uh, and it's almost as if those record deals are set up to fail because as soon as you, your face is off TV, people generally lose interest because they only had that TV journey connection with you, right? And so it's really hard to push an artist um, after, after you know, you, you're, you're pulled out of the spotlight immediately. Uh, the other thing that's that's kind of like disingenuous with those shows is a lot of times they'll get artists who want to be a singer but they're not technically a musician or a songwriter or, or a, you know, an incredibly seasoned performer. They're just somebody who has a, a viral moment that leads them to somehow n navigate the journey of the show and win it. And so what happens the second you win the next day, they're like, okay, what are we doing? And they're like, I don't know. What are we doing? And they're like, well, do you have any songs? Do we have anything we can work with? Um, you know, and it becomes a, a much more difficult proposition for, the record label to sort of piece together a career. Whereas somebody who has an entire catalog of songs written in the style that they're presenting themselves on, on the show, you know, they can most likely have far more success if they lose. And then they can use the notoriety that they've gained on the show to then navigate behind the scenes and produce a really good album, you know, leveraging the fame that they've garnered from being on the show and they don't owe anybody all of the money that they they've been signed. You know, when when you get a record deal, it's it's this kind of worst kept secret in the world that all of the money that they give you is is repayable. You know, it's 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 almost impossible for an artist signed to a major label to make any money these days. And they all love to give the impression that they're all super wealthy and stuff like that, but a lot of them don't actually get paid at all. Or if they do, it's always in lieu of paying it back later on. You know, they have these big paydays um, and then you owe that money back. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent, but Haley probably did um, the best thing that ever happened to her was she did not win American Idol. So, uh, and I think that we're all better off for that because we get beautiful performances like this.
Um, she may not have been even allowed to do this if she'd have won contractually, if she'd won Idol, you know? And so that would have been a huge tragedy as well. So what she's currently doing is a little bit of scat singing, um, which is a, a classic technique from the genre as well. Uh, where you tr- you know the singer will try to emulate like a, a brass solo or something like that like they might be riffing on a you know play you know something the trumpet player is doing or the the saxophone player if there was one um and so that's that's where you get those weird sort of uh vocal enunciation things with like what da do you know it's that's what that is that's scat singing essentially <laughs> I love how she never loses character. She's got nothing to do right now, so she just gets way more into the physicality of the performance rather than just standing there going, what now, guys, you know? White shade, so good. say man props also to jack white for coming up with this song um in the first place because it's 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 real easy to write the white stripes off as just this kind of ephemeral post-punk noise kind of thing with not a lot of depth to it um but if there's anybody who understands you know their influence and, and drawing from an abundance of influences and focusing that through a different lens with this sort of monoidistic kind of focus it's Jack White, you know, he, he gets it. He, he lives and breathes these genres. And I, I sort of didn't give him much of a time of day until I watched a documentary with him and Jimmy Page and someone else, another guitar player, yeah, the edge from you too. And they were just talking guitar. And when he started talking about his influences and things like that, and, uh, and you know, he could keep up with those guys as far as like knowledge goes. And I always, I always wrote him off as being a, very, a subpar guitar player and all that sort of stuff. Um, but then I quickly learned that it's, it's all very, um, he's, he's, he's one of those guys who's pure authenticity. He just, he, he knows what he likes and that's what he reproduces through his art. Right. Um, and you know, writing lyrics like, you know, I'm going to Wichita, you know, all that whole little stanza there, it just evokes imagery. Right. And that's the sign of a true poet. Right. If you can, if you can close your eyes, listen to the lyrics and go, I'm there. Right then that's magic in and of itself. Writing lyrics like that isn't easy. It doesn't come easy to most people. Um, yeah, so that's, I, ju- I just want to, I don't think it'd be right sort of finishing off this this reaction without giving some credit to Jack for writing a, an incredibly adaptable song. And you can hear, like, his influence, his influences come from this sort of genre a lot of times. And so even though he's writing contemporary pop rock sort of music, you can see the roots exposed here um because it fits so well into this genre uh viscerally like imagery wise all that sort of stuff so it's interesting you can see how it just easily is malleable into a traditional kind of jazz big band kind of swing kind of thing so very cool um anyway that's about all i got to say on this one um if you feel like i've brightened your day at all feel free to buy me a coffee i'll leave a link in the description or just hit the thanks button below the video and youtube um that's youtube's way of allowing you to to uh support channels that you're interested in uh, without leaving the app, which is a cool new thing. Also like, share, follow, subscribe, and hit me up with some more stuff. Comment, what's your favorite uh, uh, postmodern jukebox song um, that I haven't done? Maybe that's what the next one I'll do. And thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you, and I'll catch you on the next one.